what's going on guys welcome back to my channel all right guys so for today's video we're gonna talk about the different drugs that we use in that OMS office guys so the main point here guys for you to know and I'm pretty sure this is gonna be one of your questions in your exam the balance anesthesia that's the surgeon's goal and our goal as well remember balance anesthesia what exactly do I mean by balance anesthesia guys sorry by the way I have to wear my glasses uh, it's it's a sunny day here in the beautiful city of Chicago I mean I'm not in Chicago exactly but it's just a beautiful day I got my shirt on it's not gonna be as hot I heard that it's gonna be a good 70 75 degrees so that's perfect weather guys and not too hot not cold at all all right guys so these are the main four things that are required for balance anesthesia number one lock of toxicity number two non flammable agents number three non addictive and number four minimal allergenicity all right now I know I talk about it in the second video which was part two um, so these are these are the three main things when it comes to the anesthesia that we use in the office guys all right guys so uh, this is something important uh, to know I know we talk about it a little bit in video number two and this is the three main things for balance anesthesia okay not the requirements but this is something that you have to know all right <clears throat> so the first one I you probably will remember this the first one analgesia all right guys so what is analgesia meaning basically that you're it's gonna be pain-free for the patient during the surgical procedure all right so these are drugs guys pretty much narcotics okay to kill pain all right and the drugs are ketamine all right from my experience guys ketamine it's the most used in the OMS office guys basically most of the surgeons that I work with they like this medicine this medication guys ketamine number two fentanyl I will say that's the second most use from my experience all right so we have ketamine fentanyl and of course we have to add the local anesthetics that we use all right for example like lidocaine septocaine marcaine mepivacaine that's what i'm talking about the local anesthetic guys all right so that's part of the analgesia all right so just remember if you guys work in a dental office or uh, in a or surgery office you guys know that you know after and this is how it usually happens after we sedate our patients I mean we don't only use this kind of drugs opioids narcotics right but we also use the local anesthetic just to make sure that the patient's nice and numb, right? It's just, they work together, right? It's, it's just how it is, guys. Number two, we got amnesia, all right? So you guys will remember this, amnesia, guys. So this types of medications, guys, work for memory loss. And the type of drugs that we use for the memory loss, all right, for the amnesia, these are the benzos, all right? So the benzodiazepines, guys, remember. Benzodiazepines, all right? So we get two in this specific. So the first one is Berset, which is medazolam, all right? Don't forget. Number two, Valium, 
all right which is diazepam all right so those two right so those are the two drugs uh, that are most used for amnesia all right so memory loss don't forget all right so the third one guys is hypnosis so this type of medications are used to put the patients to sleep all right so these are sleep inducing medication guys all right so the drugs that are used for sleep inducing are propofol yes i'm pretty sure that you guys know which one is a propofol medication it's the famous medication that kill michael jackson yes that's the one guys don't worry don't worry propofol can be very safe another medication is the second one brevitol all right so let me go ahead and just give you a little bit of the history uh, a few years ago maybe about i don't remember exactly the year but it's about 25 20 25 years ago brevitol was replaced with propofol all right it looks like now these days a lot of doctors prefer propofol than Brevitol. Why? And that's because it looks like propofol works better on patients, all right? Less allergy. And remember, barbiturates, you know, same thing, going back. Barbiturates, which one of the barbiturate drug is Brevitol was replaced with the benzodiazepines, which is propofol, all right? It's just much safer. It's biotransformed quicker in the patient's body, all right? And that's the problem with Brevito, guys. Brevito lasts a lot longer in the patient's body. So what happened is that Brevito which is the barbiturate, all right? Works this way. Once you give Brevitol to the patient, Brevitol is absorbed by the body's fat. And then it's slowly released into the body. I know it's gonna be a little confusing when it comes to barbiturates to benzodiazepine drugs, guys. Just remember, the barbiturates always will finish with Tall, for example, in this case, Brevitol. All right, so Brevitol, it's a barbiturate. Don't forget. All right, guys. So now we're gonna move on. Now we're gonna talk about inhalation sedation. So inhalation sedation, it's uh, it's something that we use in my office, in the office that I work. Uh, I've been doing oral surgery for uh, for three years now. And I have worked next to several, several doctors, uh, several surgeons. And uh, this is actually the first time that I see a practice using the inhalation sedation. I think it's really amazing. Um, now, one thing that I can tell you guys from my experience, sometimes the hardest part of the procedure is to start an IV on the patient. And that's because, you know, some people are nervous and, uh, you know, people don't like needles and things like that, you know? So sometimes that's the hardest part from my experience. Sorry guys, I think it's about to rain. <laughs> so uh, inhalation sedation. The agent that we used is, it's called sibofluorine. And the way that we use this is, is actually, it comes actually in a liquid form and uh, we pour it into the vaporizer which is the uh, it's the machine that we use for that liquid to form into gas so we deliver the gas to the patient through a mask and then you know, the patient pretty much starts breathing the the sibuprofen and that's the way they go to sleep now there's a whole bunch of other drugs that we use in the office and these are for other reasons. For example, we use a steroids 
medications. Steroids helps to fight inflammation. So the less inflammation you have, or I mean the less inflammation the patient has, and the drug that we use for that is, is dexamethasone, which is Decadron. Steroids helps with the inflammation. The less inflammation, which you know at the end we know that inflammation is normal. That's that's just part of the healing process. Other drug that we use, and this is an anti-emetic medication. Basically, this helps for the patient to have less nausea and vomiting. And the medication is Andoncitrone, also known as Sofran. Just remember that both barbiturates and benzodiazepines work the same way. So basically, they both suppress the CNS. That means the central nervous system and blocks the neurotransmitters. Now, one thing that you should guys you should guys know as well is remember that barbiturates get replaced with benzodiazepines. All right, guys. So I'm actually at home and uh, I had to finish the video here. Uh, actually, this morning I was. I was recording this video on my way to work. Uh, I'm back from work now, I'm here at home. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. Uh, hopefully this video helps you learn. Uh, please, any questions, concerns, please make sure that you leave your comment, your question, anything else, please let me know. Uh, now, just to inform you guys, I'm gonna be making uh, another video. And this video is gonna be about uh, the different drugs that we use for uh, emergency situations. Alright guys, so please give me a like, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.